Blake, Colin Kaepernick will be on an NFL roster by the end of this season. Is that an overreaction or not? Uh, overreaction. I don't think he'll be on. A, I don't think he'll be on a roster. All for just the reasons that we just spoke about, huh? Yeah, I don't think he'll be on an NFL roster. If he wanted to play football, I think he could. I, I, I very well think he could play on the XFL. That's that's okay. Yeah, he's saying. eligible to be in the uh, XFL, but there's no. I don't think his prize is going to land playing the XFL. He's. Yeah, I mean, if he really if that that's the question to me is does he love the game still? If he loves the game, then go play it. But if not, um. And I can also see probably the way he's looking at it too is he thinks he's deserved a certain level of pay, and I definitely understand the way of thinking at that point. But at some point, if you really love the game, you're going to figure a way to play it, and if you're that good, you're, the right people are going to stick by you. you well know? said. Very well said. So overreaction right there. Colin Kaepernick will not be on the NFL roster by the end of the season. Uh, another quarterback. Uh, of course, we all, <coughs> excuse me. Of course, we all know that Tula Tunga Viola went down with a season-ending hip injury over the weekend on uh, Saturday. It was a dislocated hip. It was good that it wasn't broken. But uh, going off of that, in this statement: um, Tula Tunga Viola will still be a top five quarterback in the 2020 NFL draft. Is that overreaction or not? Uh, no, I'm not an overreaction. Not he's an overreaction still going to be a top five quarterback next year. No, you're saying is he's still going to be a top five, like go be one of the top five quarterbacks picked, correct? Yep, that's what I'm saying. Yes, then I still think he's going to be one of the top five quarterbacks picked. I still think he possibly goes in the first round. Mm. Someone's going to be dumb enough to take him. The back end, definitely in the back end, he could for sure go in the second round because I've. Uh, Based on reports that I've been seeing uh, the past few days, is he's he's going to make a full recovery and be able to start throwing. Uh, he's uh, he's expected to be thrown around the time of the draft. Yeah, and that's great for him. I mean, you've seen all you need to see with him, really. He's he's a great prospect. Mm -hmm. So a team is going to take a chance on him, and, and that might even be better news for uh, the team that really wanted him in the, in the long run because he might fall a little bit now, and that gives the team a chance to – accumulate more uh, pieces around him possibly just like how the Raiders did uh, a few years back with the old Khalil Mack in the first round Derek Carr in the second that was mm -hmm. that worked out beautifully it's for going to help hey this two injury is going to help out um, the better teams in the league that need a quarterback or at least want someone for the future but um, I agree uh, I think that this is not an overreaction there's going to be someone um, possibly dumb enough to take him or at least um, think that he still deserves to be a uh, top five quarterback in the draft. Uh, moving on to number three. As a fan, the games in Mexico are better than the games in London. Is that an overreaction or not? Mm, I think it's not an overreaction. Mm. You like the atmosphere better? I think... Um... And I kind of want to be neutral on this one because there's aspects of the Mexico game that I like, and then there's also aspects of the London games that I really like. So you can call this like, reaction like then. Yeah. Okay. Because um, I like how the London games, you know, they, the, the players get to travel and you know they get to experience a new place that probably most of them haven't been to before. But I also hate how far it is. Mm. I hate that. I mean, that really takes you out of the swing of things. Yeah, it does. Uh, Especially yeah. Mexico. I don't like how sketchy it is. Mm -hmm. um, there's laser pointers in the crowd. Oh, messing with Brock Osweiler um, a couple years back. The field is just a mess. It's I a mean, dog the shit field. It, the it's, altitude uh, is insane. It's two. It's over two thousand feet higher than Mile High. Yeah, and and that cannot be enjoyable to play in. Hell no. I think. I mean, there's. Man, I, I really do like how high tech the stadiums are in London too, like the, the Tottenham Stadium oh, that they, we got they, to play it's in. It's brand week. new stadium. It looks good. Unbelievable, unbelievable stadium art, and and those that's big money right over there. I mean, mm -hmm. soccer stadiums you can't touch. Oh, There's not stadiums like that in the United States. You know what I mean? No, nah. maybe probably uh, not many. Uh, probably the LA one, the Inglewood, opening up next year. That, one, that one. one's never going to be built. So. <laughs> And they're five billion dollars over budget, and and still not even close to being done. Shit, I'm excited. I just want it to be done because according to the drops, it looks badass. 
but we'll see if it's actually finished. Just like that one mall back in EG, huh? Off the freeway. Man. Only real ones are going to know what we're talking about. Um, I would have made Elgar a lot better. Oh, yeah. But, uh, fuck Elgar. I know. Go Boise. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, um, as a fan, I would agree that the Mexico games are been better than the London ones. And that's just for one reason. And that's so I don't have to wake up at like nine o'clock my time to watch a football game with two of the teams that aren't even like mid level teams. Normally they're bad teams that go over to the to um to London. And that's just not it's something really I want to watch. Weird matchups for the London games. That's what I'm saying. It's, it seems like they do pick much better matchups for the Mexico games. I mean the Chargers and the uh, Chiefs, great matchup. They had the Patriots There's and the Raiders I think, a year it. ago. Yeah, they had the the Raiders and the Texans a few years back, and that was a crazy game. Yeah, it was. So, um, that, and that's why, as a fan, I do prefer the Mexico games over the London games. Not to mention, it's closer for the players too. They probably like not having to go way over the, you know, all the way across uh, the Atlantic. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be much better fun for them. I agree. Uh, Move on to statement number four, though, Blake. It, this is one that we've had in the last few year uh, weeks. But with his performance over the weekend, is Lamar Jackson, or so, with his performance over the weekend, Lamar Jackson is now the MVP favorite, in your opinion. He is the betting favorite, according to Vegas. But in your opinion, is this a overreaction or not? No, this is not an overreaction. You like him better than uh, Russell Wilson? Absolutely, yes. I think he's more captivating, and uh, the record holds up, too. I feel it. Um, I think that this might be still uh, is going to be an overreaction just because uh, one of the biggest stats I like with Russell Wilson is his uh, turnover touchdown to interception ratio. It's something Lamar uh, doesn't have. I mean, of course, it's not bad uh, because he's, he's still having a great season. But so far this year, Russell Wilson has thrown 23 touchdowns to just two interceptions. While uh, Lamar Jackson, on the other hand, having a great season, he has thrown nine touchdowns to five interceptions. Of course, those aren't bad numbers by any means. But um, also with the eye test, Lamar Jackson puts on these highlight plays week in and week out. Um, But Russell Wilson, to me, uh, catches my eye more because he turns a lot more um, nothing plays into something. In my opinion, and I think uh, that's I think that's what makes him more of an MVP. But of course, it is a really tight race. It, it's not. I'm not knocking on Lamar Jackson at all, not at all. But I think that Russell Wilson still has the slight edge over him. Agree to disagree. Hey, I'm okay with that. That's what we do on this show. Uh, statement number five, last one of the week. Um, Rob Gronkowski will be on an N- NFL team by the end of the season. Is this an overreaction or not? Overreaction. You, he's not going to be on the pass by the end of the year? No, he's he's not going to be on the pass. <laughs> Honestly, I, just don't think so. I think it's overreaction, but at the same time, if this if he does actually join the pass before the end of the NFL season uh, for their playoff push, I think it's like around week... 12 or 14 years. I think like round week 14. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd be disappointed, but I would not be surprised. Yeah, I mean, he could do it, but I just don't think he would. I mean, he's having too much fun being would, a dancer for the LA Lakers. They would probably Lakers. welcome him back with open arms, you oh, know. They definitely isn't he isn't he doing all this crazy stuff now? Isn't he doing a bunch of all this weird, uh, Health type stuff. I guess I shouldn't say weird. I guess it's kind of a kind of good thing, kind of beneficial. He's been involved in everything um, that you could possibly do as a human. I think he's a big CBD proponent. Yeah, he is. For CBD. I don't know if that's even allowed by the NFL. Not so. yet, at least. Probably going to take a little bit longer. Did you see him as a dancer with the Lakers last night? Oh, I didn't. I didn't catch that. <laughs> He, uh, to me, Rob looks like he's having way too much fun off the field to rejoin the no fun league and the Patriots themselves. 
But that is the overreaction segment for this week.